WFC. Good evening and welcome to the Of United WFC. I'm joined live tonight. I've got two brilliant guests. Um, first of all, first up, I'll, I'll introduce you, Ella. So, we've got Ella Rutherford, um, how are you doing? I'm really good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. And obviously, Natalie as well. You're joining me. Um, second week in a row for you. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited so, coming on a Tuesday regular. show. Regular. <laughs> And it's a big guest. I'm so happy that Ella decided to come on. Been watching Ella, you know, bits and bobs, and now we're going to go into it. But we've been watching you for a while, isn't it, Ella? And now you're just coming on this show, so we're just so grateful. So <laughs> no, I appreciate it you not having me, honestly. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Um, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we may as well start at the very start then um, with your career to date, Ella. So, obviously, started at Millwall. Um, Obviously, after that, then you sort of went WSL to um, Bristol City, um, Crystal Palace and Leicester on loan, and now you're at Charlton Athletic. Um, so quite a varied journey. Um, but do you just want to sort of talk about your experiences at those clubs? Thanks, obviously, you know, with it being sort of differed between two leagues, how you've sort of found it, you know, um, things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I started off at Millwall, obviously. Um, I was young when I started there, probably about 12 um, until I was 18, uh, sort of my home club, um, where I learned a lot. Um, coached by like Jilly Fatty and that, so that helped me a lot, um, being young and having someone experienced like that. I think she was at Arsenal at the time. Um, and then obviously, 18, left there, went to Bristol, um, which was quite a big move for me. Um, I'm quite a home girl. Like, been in London, live in London, grew up in London. So, um, to obviously move to Bristol, I think that was a bit of a hit and miss thing sort of thing um I didn't know sort of how it was going to end up and how it was going to go but I obviously went um yeah I spent a season at Bristol it, it was it was interesting like, I learned a lot um from playing in WSL against top opponents and, and top players so um yeah that was good I enjoyed that year there um and then struggled a bit away from home so I decided to come home I was in a sort of a two year with them but um spent the last season of my contract sort of being at Palace uh, which was back at home that didn't quite work out for me um, just in terms of going from full-time to part-time again um, I felt I sort of dropped off my game and you know wasn't as strong wasn't as sharp wasn't sort of things like that so I then decided to go to Leicester obviously they were going full-time um, which sort of helped me again um, get back to the level that I wanted to be at um, but then again it was the move away from home that I sort of struggled with um, so yeah, that was kind of also spoiled from isolation and stuff and, and the COVID and all that, um, came home from there, sort of had that isolation period to sort of get my head right and see sort of what I wanted and where I wanted to be. Um, and then decided to join Charlton. So I've been there now, second season there. Um, and it's all going really well. Good so, to yeah. hear. Spot on. Um, I just want to touch, and I hope you don't mind, Matt, um, no, on sort of, uh, have, well, funny, a funny story. I, heard, I don't know if anyone knows it, but obviously when you went to Bristol, um, the toaster, the toaster <laughs> incident. <laughs> no! You don't have to talk about it. No, you know what it was? It's moving oh. away, and it's... I was I was I was young, but I wasn't young. I was young for mm. moving away and having to do sort of the adult things that you're not you don't usually do at home. I know putting a bit of toast in the toaster is something you do at home, but where I was away and I don't know what happened with the toaster, but the the bread was in for too long. It sort of went <laughs> to smoke, um, and then I put it into the sink to try and like stop it from smoking, but I didn't unplug it, um, mm. and then yeah. But I did call my manager at the time and was like, the toast is in the yeah. sink. She was like, get it out of the sink. What are you doing? And I was, <laughs> but I don't know what I was doing. I was, it was yeah. just, you know what? I was, I was just young and yeah. burnt some toast. That was it. Would, would you say it's like, because I mean, I think that's what, you know, you, you said you were young and that's what the young kids go through. Sort of when you go into like, like uni kind of thing that like you go, you have those mistakes that happen, don't you? Definitely. Yeah. Like it was a big wake up call moving away from home um, because I was kind of like, I had everything done here for me at home. 
Um, not so much now because I moved away and mum's like, you've got no excuse, do the washing, do this, do that. But um, yeah, it was kind of that, like you had to you had to do everything, your food shopping, your, your washing, yeah. like making sure everything, you've got to be organised. Like it was a big, it was a big wake up call, like stepping into adult life. So yeah, but I think it helped me a lot. Like it's helped. Oh, definitely. Whole year was like just a whole learning thing for me. So it helped me, it helped me massively uh, moving away. But yeah, I'll definitely be staying in London, I think. Um until I'm ready to move again. <laughs> so obviously you were talking before then as sort of about like transitioning sort of between full-time and part-time. How have you found it then in terms of that? Because obviously, you know, it, it's varied, isn't it, in the women's game, which teams are sort of full-time and part-time. But how, how do you juggle that? Because obviously I'm assuming part-time, then you have to go and sort of find a job and like you said, there's maybe not as much contact time sort of on the training pitch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, before I went full-time at Bristol, I was part-time at um, Millwall. So I had college then um and then i had also two jobs alongside that so i did coaching and i did like admin work within the community scheme sort of thing there um it was like that year that i was kind of like i just want to make this my job now like i want to i want to be able to play full time and just commit my all to football which i think was definitely the right decision at the right time like i was i was playing well at Millwall and stuff and it's it's a shame that sort of things didn't plan out there um that season but definitely yeah like the the change from part-time to full-time I'd say it's like it's unbelievable like you you learn so much you're there every day you know you, you've got to, you've got to manage yourself every day you've got to turn up every day and it's an intense environment but it, it's definitely like I think I've benefited from it massively um being in that environment because it's like yeah, it's your job. Like, I wouldn't want to do anything else. I mean, I also, went, obviously, when I was at Palace as well, I had to do, like, it was part-time, so I had to get a little job on the side. So I was doing um, I was doing some work then, coaching work, and then I went to Charlton, same thing there, part-time, then signed up to be a postwoman. That didn't really work out for me. Um, so it was kind of in the back of my mind constantly, like, I just want to be full-time. I just want to play full-time football. Um, so it's just good that, obviously, the opportunities come now for me to stay at home because that it was the only option was to move away mm. and that was kind of the barrier for me there I was kind of like do I want to go do I not so yeah it's just good that the opportunities sort of popped up in London and uh I'm at home and, and I'm playing football full-time now so mm. sound like a very homely girl is that sort of yeah where you think you've played your best football then being at home I think so you know like it, you take yourself uh, when you take yourself away and stuff uh, and out of your I wouldn't say it's my comfort zone because I'm happy to step out of it, but it's the family, it's the friends, it's, this, it's that support system that I've got here at home. I think that's like so important. Um, you know, when, when you've had a bad training session or whatever and you've come home, when I was at Bristol, it was kind of like I've sat in my thoughts um, and it's like oh, I've got to wake up the next day now and put it right without actually speaking to people. Um, but obviously here I've come home, I've got mum, I've got friends, I've got that release. Um, because it is such an intense environment, you know, it's not always having to speak about football. I'm here, I'm surrounded by people that, you know, they support me. So I think that's the main thing for me, um, which is why obviously I'm just enjoying being at home. Yeah, absolutely. I think it makes it easier as well. Like you say, you know, you're talking about sort of that environment, but I think as well, it's important as well, like you say, off the pitch, isn't it, that you have like that support network, especially like, you know, Bristol to London must be like, what, yeah. three hours, maybe more. So obviously, like yeah. you say, you that, I suppose it's just easier, isn't it, in terms of performing as well. You know that, like you say, you know, if something's not gone right on the pitch, you've got that support network um, off yeah. the pitch. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Um, but yeah, I want to sort of link in then a little bit um, on training and obviously just, just only a brief sort of overview then. Obviously, you know, full-time training, what's that like then in terms of, how you do it with Charlton? So obviously, like, is it so many set days? Is there like, you know, recovery in there? Is there analysis, sort of things like that? Um, or do you get given yeah. things to do? So obviously, like throughout the season, we've had like three game weeks as well, which has been really intense. You know, you're having to analyse one opponent, play against them, analyse another one for the Wednesday. And then it's, it is quite packed in. But a, a usual, like normal week for us, um, we get two days off. Um, we're in every day apart from that. Obviously, the game on the Sunday and then we're training two, three times a day sometimes. So it's, it is intense, but it's definitely like, it's the dream in it really. I can't, I can't say much. I just, I turn up, I'm buzzing every day to be there. Um, great environment there. So it makes it easy to obviously want to go in and, and yeah, just, just work hard. 
Yeah, I just want to touch on sort of what you said as well before about, and then now you buzz in every day and it's in the environment. It, it, well, not, not, not even about Charlton, but just generally about teams that do turn full-time. Obviously, you know, Charlton's got a good men's team. They've done that. Leicester, like you said, they turn full-time. Um, uh, and obviously Bristol full-time. Does it, do you feel that difference between the clubs when, when sort of, like you said, you went from the part-time, Charlton, to, to now? Is it a real massive difference? Do you really feel like is that, is that one club mentality really coming through now at, at Charlton a lot more? Yeah, yeah. I think obviously like it's massive, like you say, teams going full-time. Um, one, I think it's obviously benefited the league that we're in at the minute. I think it's really mm. competitive. Like it's turned, mm. most teams are turning full time, and and you know anyone's beating anyone. So um, that I think obviously benefits the game itself. But being in a full time environment, obviously in that team, and you're with them every day and stuff. I think like you get to spend that good quality time with your teammates as well. If that makes sense. So like I'm I'm loving it at Charlton. Like we just feel like one big family, one big club. Like you say. Um, and I, I also had that feeling sort of at Bristol as well. And like you say, at Leicester as well, because you're there with all the girls constantly, you're like, yeah, you're just you're just in and around it always and you're building friendships and you're working hard. So, yeah. On that then, was there anything specific that sort of you did as a, a club in the summer? Because obviously, you know, you mentioned turning pro. There's obviously quite a few new faces, wasn't there, at, um, at Charlton, obviously. Some of the, you know, players like yourself that stayed on from last year. But is there anything to sort of maybe help with that sort of team bonding and gelling? Because obviously you've started this season, you know, pretty well. Um, you know, so is there anything like specific or is it just a case of, like you say, sort of through training and building relationships that way? Um, I think Karen, I think like all credit to Karen. So I think she's brought in like not just good players, but they're really good people. You know, we, mm. we all get on. Um, we're all there to work hard. We're all there to support each other. So um, it obviously did take a few meetings for us to sort of get an understanding of what each other want, how each other react to certain things and stuff, just like any new team, really. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got a good mixture of personalities. We've got a good mixture of experience and ages and stuff. Um, so I think that's helped a lot. Um, yeah, we, we just, we're just all really together. Really, and that's just how it was from the from the get-go, um, I'd say, um, just because of, like I say, credit to Karen, she's brought in some really good people. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and Karen, obviously, you know, came from Spurs and obviously come to Charlton and so just shows that backing that they've got um, for the women's team, um, bringing in a top coach like that, really. But I just want yeah, to touch on, on one little player that you did bring in, Sophie Hilliard, goalkeeper. Um, yeah, she's, yeah. she's so good, and I've saw her. She's played for Man United development team, and now she's like she's gone full time pro. Which no, yeah, she's yeah. a great she's a great person as well. Like I say, like we we've just got so many great people, and like so for herself, you can just see she's excelling in in the full time environment. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like it definitely helps um, with playing just playing development really, just being in and around, you know, uh, learning every day, everyone learning every day really. So um, yeah. Bless her. I'm looking after her like you asked me to anyways. Good, good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> she um, no. no, he's joking. No, but yeah. you did touch... Go on, Matt. No, I was just going to say, Nat, do you want to go on to the championship? Yeah, the there? championship, like you said, is, is now... I think probably at your... When you went for Millwall, there was, like you say, it was only Bristol. That was the local one. Whereas now, you know, London City... Um, Talking of Durham, maybe being hybrid part time, Lewis, Charlton. You know, I think there's there's teams all around now. How how does it feel from probably when you started and it was like you say, just maybe Bristol as a local, to now sort of yeah, it's team crazy. London. It's crazy, ain't it? Sort of how the games developed and that. Um, I think Charlton itself, like the backing we've had from the men, it's unbelievable. Like I. Like we are all so grateful that we've obviously got an opportunity um, at such a big club like Cholton um, to sort of go full time and that. But yeah, definitely, like it's it's just improved the league altogether. You know, it's, you're at Millwall and you know there's some teams that are sort of here and some teams are sort of there. But this, like, you can look from the table now, like everything's so tight and everything's so like you just you just never know. You know, it's just the team that turns up on the day, I think, and and that's how it's sort of sort of planning out this season. So. But yeah, it's definitely a lot more competitive from what it's been, um, having played in the championship previously and, and to now. So yeah. How is it? How is it playing when like you say you can just turn up and you know 
Uh, you don't know. Do you know what? It, it's, it's hard because everyone's got that grit and determination. Everyone's got that back in, you know, everyone, like everyone wants to win. Um, and that, that for me is like so good because it's then like got you going. You're like, okay, cool. We're turning up today and, and we're not, do you know what I mean? It's, it, it is a good feeling to obviously turn up and, and know your opponent. They just, they want to spoil things. They want to, they want to win and, and you're the same. So, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just great that obviously the championship is going in the right direction and teams are going full time. Yeah, spot on. I'd agree. One question I do want to ask you though, and I constantly go on about this myself, but do you feel that maybe there should be more than one team promoted? Cause we always talk about like from our side, the disappointment of only one team going up. You know, you said obviously how competitive it is. And I think if you look at the table anywhere from Palace in fifth, you know, anybody could go up. But I think it is frustrating from a fan's point of view that seeing all these clubs turn pro and put in all the hard work and what the players go through to see sort of one team go up, it's a little bit like, doesn't sit well with us. But what what do you think? Or maybe if you had any ideas, if you're sort of allowed uh, to... Do you know what? I haven't I, I haven't really looked or thought about that, I'll be honest, um, just because of sort of the mindset I'm in at the minute and sort of the team that I'm in. It's sort of just taking each game as it comes and we're just trying to develop and, and work hard and work on things and learn. Um, mm. But, yeah, sort of thinking about that now, um, I'd just say, I don't know, really. I don't, I don't know what the option is, if there's a playoff or whatever, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, it could it could develop into that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like you say, any team from there upwards, it, it can happen for anyone this season. And I think, you know, the winners and the ones who get promoted, I think it will be fully deserved. Um, yeah. Just because of, like you say, the hard work going in behind the scenes from every club um, and, and teams turning professional and teams, the backing they've had. So, um, yeah, I think and anyone that gets promoted this year, I think it will be fully deserved. You just touched on something there. It's something I think we as fans even said, like a playoff. I think it would just add that extra excitement. It would, yeah. you know, obviously I think we've seen with Sky and BT and all that kind of thing that's come come now. You can watch sort of every women's game. There's more games on the FA play of the championship or they're trying to do that more, which is good. Yeah. I, I love, we want to see more championship. We will get into that, you know, that'd be good to, <laughs> to have a championship deal and stuff. But listen, what would you, how does it feel now fans are back? And, you know, because obviously I know you amazing. talked about that COVID and then now I'm back and then being at Charlton and the back in. How, how is it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, like we, we're getting we're getting a lot lot of uh, support down at our home games. It would be nice for us to get a few more for the away. But obviously we understand like there's, there's teams all over the place and stuff um, in the league. So, yeah, I mean, having the fans at home, like even my family, like it's, it's amazing because you feel... You do really feel it, like you, when you're on the pitch and, you, and you've got to get to that ball and you're tired, and you've got people shouting on the side. I do think it helps. Um, so yeah, it's been amazing, obviously having that back um, after sort of COVID crept in and, and kept everyone out. But um, yeah, like I'd like to see you lock down at a few games for us as well. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, bring your army, bring your yeah. army. That'd be lovely. <laughs> Listen, tell them they're watching, they're listening. Tell them to come, yeah. we'll come. No, honestly, honestly, I just think like. Just a personal preference, anyway, from me. Like you guys are a credit to women's football because you're so you're so behind it, and uh, yeah, I just think yeah, it would really help us. So, I think you lot should get down. Mm. I just want to touch again on another thing. Sorry, Matt, but like no seeing different people sort of saying about atmosphere and the way that people like to support, and you know, you said shouting then at that last minute. Does the shouting help? Does the kind of bit of how to say aggravation? I'm sort of I'm quite selective hearing when I play so yeah, I don't yeah. hear certain things that I don't want to hear because it's just like sometimes it can be off-putting or whatever it is but you do genuinely like you hear it and you feel it like when people are behind you and 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 you like I say you got to stretch that last ball and you, you don't feel like you can do it but you do it like you do really feel it so it does make a, a massive difference when you've got like such a crowd behind you do you know what I mean um and like I say it's nice for us because like each week people are more excited and, and, and more wanting to come to our games. Um, hopefully that will grow throughout the season. Uh, but yeah, it, it, you do feel it. Yeah, it's good nice. to hear though. And I think, yeah. um, like you said, Nat, you know, the more people that can sort of get on board with it. But I think what what's great as well, and it's coming up this weekend, is um, Women's Football Weekend. I think yeah. that's a great initiative just to showcase everything because you get, like you said, Nat, you know, all the championship games on the FA player and it's staggered as well. So in terms of growing it, 
you know, I, I just wish they could maybe do more weekends, depending on sort of how practical it is. Um, what do you think, obviously, things like that help as well? Because obviously we talk about attendances, and I think a big one for me is like retaining fans. So, for example, like I know if I use United as an example, we had like 5K um, in our first season um, for a Conti Cup game. But then it's like retaining those fans. Do you feel like, obviously, things like Women's Football Weekend, and I know you had an open training day at um, the Valley as well, things like that are all sort of beneficial um, for growing it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like like you say, this weekend sort of based for women's football. It's massive um, and it's... And it's sort of like, like you say, a bit more exposure for us, um, mm. which I think women's football is definitely heading in the right direction. Um, but it's just, I think it's getting, it's just getting everyone on board with it, really, isn't it? Like, it, women's football is women's football. And it's, it's I don't think it's ever going to be men's football, because it's not. Um, but we play we play a different way. And and that's that, that also needs to be sort of appreciated. So it would be nice um, for people to sort of be more, open-minded and be more involved mm. in supporting women's football um but yeah I think like like I say you lot you your credit to women's football because you promote it you do well you know you, you go into all your games you shout and you're loud and you're proud um which is sort of I think most teams in women's football would want and need um just just like you say to help maintain that that fan base and help sort of it's enjoyable when that's happening it's not enjoyable mm. when there's Tribs and jabs of people shouting in Rara. Like it, it, it's nice when there's a good atmosphere, and, and I think that will really contribute to sort of maintaining fans, like you say, and getting people in. So, yeah. Nat, do you want to move on to sort of discussing Charlton then? Because obviously we touched on it earlier, didn't we, about sort of being backed by the men's side and turning pro? Yeah. So, just your views on the season so far. How do you think it's gone? You know, what what's the, I mean, I know he said the aim is just to keep going, keep building, but. You know, ultimately, what what do you think uh, this year's success? Maybe. Yeah, I think I think it's really good. Like, the the things that they've done in such a short space of time, I think, are incredible for us. Um, you know, we've got our own part of the training ground that's sort of allocated to us, and changing rooms, and meeting room. Do you know, it's, we've got all that stuff that sort of belongs to us. Um, which, like I say again, it's incredible what they've done in such a short space of time because. Charlton last year, part time, and, and that's just, yeah, the backing from the men obviously have really helped. Um, but yeah, like this season, I think we all sort of know we've got we've got a, a fairly new group. Um, well, I say fairly new. There's, there's a lot of players come in. Um, so yeah, I think for us, it's just every every game we're taking it game at a time, and, and we're just trying to improve as a team. Um, so there's not there's not many goals as in like. Going, going for promotion and stuff and doing things like that because we're, we're literally we're, we're open-minded and we're just sort of like we just need to keep working hard keep improving on our performances every week and um, yeah sort of the rest will take care of itself so yeah I think it's nice though to hear that because obviously you look at you know other other clubs that are sort of left behind and sort of maybe not backed fully and it's, it's unfortunate to see and I think what's been sort of nice is obviously you know that when the men's team got took over, like you say, they've integrated the women. And, you know, you mentioned facilities there, which I know at some clubs and other sort of players we spoke to, obviously lower down as well, it's not always the case. So it's great, like I say, to hear from sort of your point of view that, you know, Charlton are really going for it and obviously sort of linking into your, sort of yourselves as players as well. You can only benefit from that, you know, like you said, in terms of like your own training facility and things like that. Um Natalie's asking me, yeah, uh, she's <laughs> she wants to go back to the uh, the Leicester days and um, that Reading FA Cup <laughs> game. So, <laughs> I mean, oh, Nat what a game that was! Oh, Nat Natalie talks about atmosphere in that, um, but I, I just, yeah, I don't know if you want to touch on that briefly from your sort of point of view in terms of atmosphere on the day, but that, that's one that sticks out for us. Yeah, um, I think you know you, we've gone into the game there, and we're like the underdogs. It's like. Lesser are going to get beat here. Um, Leicester versus Reading, wasn't it? So just in case, yeah. yeah. yeah sorry, I was at Leicester the time. Yeah. Um, I'm quite used to being underdog, so I'm up for it. I'm like, yeah, come then. Like, every, everyone was up for it that day. Um, but yeah, I mean, having you lot on the side that that benefited us because you know it's it's just it was just a great atmosphere. Um, I think yeah. Paige Bailey Gal she scored a few bangers. Um, yeah, from what I remember. <laughs> I got overexcited. I don't know if you've seen the video. 
I remember that. I, I didn't notice it. I've yeah. run up to the celebration and I've jumped and everyone's moved and I've just hit the deck and I'm like, yeah. what? Like, I'm, but it, it was a great oh. atmosphere. It, it was amazing. I can't lie. Um, yeah, and to win that game, like, like I say, I've, you're an underdog. You've got nothing to lose, um, and we definitely went out there and gave it all that game. So yeah, that was a good, um, a good experience. Yeah. Like you say, a great atmosphere. So, which helped yeah. us. That shows obviously having fans in, having the back in, um, it definitely helped us that day. Do you find things like that then easier from your point of view? Like you talked about being an underdog, is that easier? Would you say for you personally than maybe going into a game as favourites, or do you just kind of treat them all the same? Um, um, no, yeah, like I think when you're playing against a team in your league, you've got to kind of treat it all the same. Um, but at the time, obviously, you're playing against the WSL side that's very well and put together. It's, it's very well experienced and stuff. So I think on that on that day, um, we were the underdogs and we were like kind of like, look, we've got we've not got much to lose here. Um, but yeah, like I say, if if you're playing against a team in your league, I think every every preparation has to be the same you know you, you've got to go and you've got to analyze every opponent you've got to make sure that you're you've got your game plan correct you've got everything correct and, you, and you're going out there and giving 110 percent um no matter who it is you know um so yeah for me like I said I've always been underdog so uh I do enjoy that because it's like people don't expect it but yeah definitely in this league um at this moment in time I think you know we we're all sort of preparing like I say, anyone turn up on the day and anyone's beating anyone. So you've just got to prepare and work hard on the day. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in terms of that, then obviously, you know, we, we touched on earlier your time at Bristol and obviously that was, you know, WSL um, at the time. Um, I'm assuming then from that, it's even though you're still young yourself, you know, you've got many experiences that you've sort of taken to Charlton um, sort of from playing WSL. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, like I say, it was that first time in that environment, um, in that full-time environment. Um, I learned a lot about myself as a person um, and things that sort of I needed to change um, and as a player as well. So I think that's definitely helped me grow um, and learn, obviously, to go out of that environment again and be part-time and then goes to go back into it. I appreciate it a lot more. Definitely now I feel like I feel so grateful to obviously be a part of Charlton um, and have the opportunity to obviously be full time. But I've definitely taken taken full. I, I was a sponge at Bristol. I took full advantage of everything that I could have. Because, um, like, like I say, you don't know how long it's going to last. Um, mm. And it and it lasted a season, which was which was nice. Um, but yeah, again, to be back in that environment now, I think I'm a completely different person um, just from things that I learned there. Um, I can I can cook toast now without burning it. And stuff, so that, that's good. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. Um, it was definitely it was definitely like for me it was just a whole person change like experience for me. I, I just changed as a person and and I am grateful for that. But yeah, um, yes, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a good. It was a good time in WSL. You know, I still that's what... remember that Everton goal. Sorry, Nat. I just wanted to touch on the Everton goal that flew in the top corner. Don't yeah, Natalie. Quality. I remember, yeah. was it the Liverpool one when you beat Liverpool? I remember that. Was it Liverpool? That yeah. was on BT Sport. That was, I think, that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, was that like, was yeah little, that's my girl. I followed that up, <laughs> followed, followed up on the keeper and, and tucked that one away. Yeah. But yeah, I think the Everton goal today, I think that's probably my favourite of my favorite, career. Yeah. Have you seen um, that Just one, because... Matt? I just remember the Liverpool one, and that's when I when I first yeah, saw that Liverpool one, I thought this girl, this girl, and I thought <laughs> you know she's special. No, striker. Yeah, I think I've teed that one up at Everton. Um, we went in at half time, and I think the manager was like to me, "L, we need something," and I'm like, "Okay," and we went out, and the balls come over, and it's falling, and I'm like, I'll, the only thing I had in my head was just to hit it, so I've hit it on the half volley and went in top corner. Yeah. Um, and run over to obviously the manager and stuff to celebrate. So I think she sort of gave me that bit of confidence and belief that I needed to go and put that one away. But yeah. Yeah. I just want to touch on something. You were very young, obviously, when you went to Bristol. And now I suppose, you know, like you said, taking all these experiences that you've had. And I think you went on loan. And I know you touched on those the loan times that you had. Uh, we're seeing it grow more and more seeing like sort of the young players maybe come into Man United or or a City or even like you know 
you know, different levels of teams and they are going on loan. They are going on loan, not ever in the WSL or, you know, in the championship a lot. Um, how did it help you going on loan and just sort of, do you see that it's happening more? So what do you think about the fact that it's happening more and more young kids are maybe not playing at the top WSL clubs so they are getting that loan experience and game time? Yeah, it's definitely beneficial. Um, you know, there's two top divisions here in women's football, I think. Um, and like you say, most clubs here are sort of trying to live up to that of being full-time and stuff. So even though people are going on loan and not getting their... Um, their chances, opportunities at the bigger clubs. I think it's definitely helping sort of, as a young player, you need to be playing. I think that's what also what I've learned. It's like going to places and needing to be playing. You need to be getting that experience and making mistakes to put them right and stuff. Um, it, it's all good, well and good sort of training in and around, you know, the best players and, and stuff like that to learn from them. But I think the biggest lesson you can learn is from yourself. So playing and making things like making mistakes and stuff um, and being able to just have that experience, I think is obviously going to help players grow. And then when they go back into that environment, they're sort of more more ready for it, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to... I just remembered a player, but... Uh, that, yeah, I don't think... I've remembered a player at Bristol, but then I remembered, no, you're at Charlton. <laughs> I'm getting it all confused. <laughs> you know what? I've been, I have been around the block a little bit, but I think it was just personally for me. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to be at home, and then the other part of me wanted to be full-time. Um, mm -hmm. So it was kind of, I was like, hit, neither here or there. Um, I think I got a little bit lost along the way, I'd say. But, yeah. I mean, that happens. It's part of football and it's part of growing up and learning, isn't it? So, um, yeah, for me, I'm just I'm just so grateful for the opportunity that I've got at Charlton. I want to touch on something. I know Matt's going to probably say it in a different way, but just sort of what yeah. you said there is like you were learning as well. So, like, like you're saying, off the pitch, there's a lot going on, moving away from home. So, you know, how did, how did they both sort of interact? Like you say, you're having to learn, develop yourself as a player and then learn about being away from the pitch as well. How was yeah. that? Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, I wouldn't say it was a struggle because when you're at football, it's like, that's yeah. your that's your time where you're just like, there's nothing else that matters. You're just training, you're focused on your training, you're focused on, you know, your game, preparing for games and stuff. Um, so that for me, obviously, if I wasn't doing football when I moved away from home, I think it would have sort of, I don't know how I would have coped, to be honest. Um, so football kind of kept me afloat at that point, football was going well for me when I moved to Bristol and stuff. Um, I was just sort of enjoying the whole experience and living in the moment. Um, I think it wasn't until Christmas, maybe, I think it was, sort of towards the end of the season, um, when I came home and I, it sort of hit me and I was like, I actually miss being home. Do you know what I mean? Like, I miss family, I miss friends, I miss all that stuff that I have. Um, so, yeah, I think for me... Coming home is probably the worst thing I could have done. <laughs> um, just because it made me obviously realise sort of what what I was missing at home, um, where you're so tunnel vision and you're in that environment. You just don't think about that. Um, but yeah, it, def it definitely sort of helped me grow as a person, like I say. Um, and I learned, I learned so much from it. So I'm grateful that it obviously happened. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I like that. I was just going to say, just sort of similar to you, not really to touch on that, that I think, you know, you, you mentioned obviously being at a few clubs, but I think as long as, you, like you said, you've learned to each club, then, you know, you can sort of, even though you talked about being hard away from home, you know, at least you've taken something with you from sort of every, you know, every journey. Um, but yeah. I want to move on to sort of the international stage as well um, with England. Because um, I know, Natalie, we were at the Euros, I'm trying to think when that was now, two years ago was it in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. The, Scotland, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, in the 19s. Yeah. But in terms of sort of international ambitions, then, um, and obviously playing for England, um, is that something you're focusing on at the minute, as well as obviously club football? Is that something sort of you know you're looking at it to sort of you know come naturally and when sort of the call happens? Because I think we'll be under 23s now, and um, it's jumped, hasn't it, from 21s? Yeah, um, I think for me, like the last, like I say, two seasons have been a bit up and down here and there. Um, I had a few injuries last season, um, which was sort of a kick in the teeth for me. I was kind of like, oh, like couldn't find no rhythm, couldn't find no like consistency of playing and being in and out and dribs and drabs of it. So I was trying to sort of get myself back on track physically and mentally. 
um, which I feel like I have done now. I think obviously joining Charlton, being at home, I think it's really like just helped me find that love again for football, um, mm. which I didn't sort because of, I was sort of caught up in it all, and I was kind of like. I kind I didn't lose the love for it, but I just didn't sort of appreciate it as much as I should have. I think, if I'm being honest with myself, those two loan periods, they were kind of up in the air and stuff for me uh, mentally. So yeah, like I say, now I'm in a much better place physically and mentally, um, and I'm just sort of focusing on just being consistent with my performances and stuff. And I think, you know, the international stage it's massive, and and it's obviously something I want to be a part of um, definitely. It's just obviously the right timing, and and if I keep doing and working hard and and doing the things that I am, um, I'm sure the opportunity will come. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm just sort of focusing on myself at the minute. Um, like I say, two injuries last year, which were quite major and stuff. Um, so it's just about me now, just enjoying my football. And I'm playing my best football when I'm when I'm enjoying it. So mm. yeah, hopefully. Mm. Talks about sort of being lost and like mentally and stuff. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, I think even as fans, with, with not being, you know, COVID and not being able to go and watch, you know, it hit a lot of people mentally and stuff. And I think football is a big thing for a lot of people's mental health. Um, do, you, do you feel like sort of it benefited you, you know, playing a lot, but then sort of like you say, you felt lost and then the injuries, do you feel like you have that support? As well from you, yeah. I know you said you have it from your family, but the clubs, the clubs good at giving sort of support around mental health. It's it's improving, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like it's. I think it's a lot more. Oh, people are a lot more open, and it's a lot more out there now. Um, I think at the time when I sort of did was struggling mentally, I didn't know sort of how to go about it or what to say or where to, who to speak to and stuff like that. So I think definitely now, like it, it's a lot more open and out there, which is great for people because, you know, if someone is struggling, they're not, they're not worried to be saying like, I need a hand here. Um, and it's helped like with all the mental health awareness and stuff, like just going on, I think it was last month, like people sharing their stories. Like, I think that was really beneficial because it's like, they're talking and it's a knock on effect. Others are talking. Um, but yeah, I think like most clubs I've been at, um, I'm quite open and honest about my feelings. This is sort of how I am as a person. So I've always reached out, always let people know when I'm struggling because I think that will help you perform better as a player, if that makes sense. So you're not, it's not something you've got to hide. Um, so if I'm not hiding it and people know that I'm struggling a bit mentally um, and I'm having a bit of an off session, they're knowing sort of how to talk to me and how to support me and stuff. Um, I think if you're putting that, mental health side of things behind a behind a screen and, and blocking people out I think um you know people are different how they deal with their with their emotions and stuff but um I think if you're putting that sort of the back of your mind and that it's definitely gonna um build up so yeah I definitely think like clubs for myself like I say it's, it's sort of me going to the person and they have been really supportive around it um which has been nice um and like you say yeah with the fans and stuff not not being able to get into the stadiums with COVID and stuff. Like football is massive. It brings it brings a lot of happiness. It brings a lot of good memories and good moments. Um, so I definitely think, yeah, like people obviously were struggling, but it's just nice now that things are back and uh, people can enjoy it again. Yeah, I mean, so you don't mind. We talk about it, you know, you're saying the army and all that, but it's a community for us as well. So it's yeah. friendships, it's... You know, it's not just always us going and watching football. It's us sitting down before, having chats, after, having meals. And I think that community is, is what it's about as well. Yeah, definitely. 100%. It's that bus, Natalie. That's all I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? The bus to an away day a at like the journey. in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, kills us off, but we love it. Um, obviously, we talk then sort of like, you know, you, you're talking about struggling and things like that, but I want to sort of move on to life away from the pitch then, um, you know, sort of your downtime then, um, and obviously sort of relaxing. Is there anything you get up to that you're able to share that you sort of do, you know, away from the pitch? Because obviously I'm assuming with sort of training full time and traveling a lot that, you know, free time's pretty limited. Yeah, um, I think COVID helped me a lot, I think to sort of know what to do with a bit of spare time. Um, so I think from COVID, I've I've sort of learned a lot about myself as a person. I like to read now, which 
they need to be simple books, but I do like to read, <laughs> um, which is nice. I, like, I enjoy music. Um, you know, on my days off, sometimes I go to the spa, just sit in the steam room and sauna and stuff and go for a little swim, um, which is nice. But yeah, I think I think that downtime for me, I think it helps a lot being at home because I'm around my family and stuff as well. So it's, it's being able to just sort of go out and, and not have to think about football for a little bit and... Yeah, I've got a lot of nieces and nephews and stuff as well, which are crazy at times. But yeah, like I say, it does help. So that's the sort of things I'll do in my downtime when I'm not at football. Nah. Yeah, no. Um, I've just seen. I don't. I don't know if you want to move on to this, um, Matt. But I've just seen a question and just going on to people's questions. Seeing a uh, Carthic there, he's sort of saying, "Do you think girls are encouraged to play football as much as boys?" I know it's sort of like a a big open ended question. You can go on for ages, but, <laughs> but how do you feel? Do you think it's changed a bit more now? Girls Definitely, are encouraged yeah. More? Like growing up for me, it's probably more boys teams than girls. Um, I think it helps a lot now that like there are full-time professionals and they are becoming role, model, role models for girls um, and young girls obviously want to get into football. So I think it is definitely, it's getting better. Um, do I think it could be better? Probably, but there's always room for improvement, I think. And uh, women's football is going in the right direction. It's just obviously about taking time. But yeah, I definitely think, you know, with, with the role models that are out there now and stuff, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's definitely helping young girls sort of look at that and think, wow, I actually could make football my job. Um, which back in the day, I didn't I, I didn't have that. I was just kind of like, play for fun and see how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, definitely now. Um, I didn't I didn't think for one minute I'd be saying, I'm sat here saying I'll play football professionally. So. Do you think you get a lot more little girls sort of saying, I want to be like you, I want to play, I want to be a striker, I want to score a goal like you? I mean, I have, I have had, you always I think had the... It? Yeah, the, the supporters at um, Bristol, like, they had loads of kids come down and stuff. So, I think, it, for me, that was, like, the biggest part of it, like, after the game, going up to them young girls and, and signing things for them and then, like, having conversations and stuff. Um, so, really interacting with younger girls, like I say, it's something that I didn't, as a young girl, have, um, that interaction with the players and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's lovely. Like, I think that's that's, like, a big part of having this job. It's having those young girls look up to you and want to and wanna be like that. So, uh, yeah. I, I just want to add, sorry, Matt, but do you feel a pressure from that? Do you feel a pressure <laughs> from people looking up to you or thinking, because you were young at a point, you know, you were young playing and then you get even like five-year-olds going, I'm going to be like you and you're like, oh, I burnt my toes oh, yeah, the other day. <laughs> pressure. I think if anything, like, it, makes, it makes what I do more like enjoyable, yeah. I think. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it comes as pressure. I think it's more, yeah, like, like I do what I do because I love it, but I also love it for those reasons, um, which is nice. Like I say, like you say, I, didn't, I never had that as a kid to be able to look up to someone and be like, oh my God, like, I actually want to play football. So to see young kids faces even at the Charlton games now um and they're getting their we're getting kids in like most most weeks now and it wasn't like that at the beginning um so yeah to see that sort of happening and to see them those faces of those young kids sort of yeah it really does make the job a, a lot more enjoyable I think uh should we move on to Q&A Nat um yeah, we'll start yeah. at the top but if anybody whilst we wait if anybody wants to send in new questions we'll try and rattle through um as I'll many as possible some as well. <laughs> yeah go for it um we'll start with John Fry um the most important thing that is needed to grow the game even stronger I mean we could be here all night so I don't know if you want to if you want to maybe summarize <laughs> a, a couple of ideas or, or things that you think maybe you know we could do this or this needs improving um I think it's going in the right direction. Like we're getting a lot more coverage on it at the TV and stuff. Um, I think my nan was just saying the other day to me, like she turned the TV on, it's like BBC One, and it was women's football. And she was like, "Oh my god!" Like so, it's a lot more accessible um, for people to watch, which I think helps um, because you know you, you're just going on to your TV and then and then it's there. So um, I think that's definitely helping um, grow the women's game. Um, personally, I wouldn't think anything else I think it's just sort of yeah the coverage that we're getting at the minute it's just it's really good um so yeah that's increase it increase it I'd say increase it let's yeah. see the championship yeah increase it maybe yeah definitely there's 
there's games that you know if I if I came to see Charlton, I won't be able to see anyone else. So I think definitely have more games, have it more staggered. I mean, we've seen with the WSL now, you can get to two games if you if you can. I mean, I think we got to two games. I got we got to three games in a week one one time. So I think <laughs> you can, you can do it, but. I think increase the TV, get it down in yeah. the championship. No, it definitely Let's does help. Like week. I say, it's like making it accessible, it's just, it makes it like people then watching mm. it and then people mm. watching it, people just like getting to know women's football because it is a lot different to men's. It's people, I think people out there are probably like, oh, they have their opinions of it, but I think women's football is women's what it is, it's women's football mm. and you've got, to, you've got to watch it to sort of understand it and enjoy it. Yeah. You know what, as well, I don't I don't know what Matt think, I know we're going to go into question, but I remember seeing you score that goal against Liverpool and thought, oh, that girl, she scored against Liverpool. Then I came to St. George's <laughs> and I saw you, and I thought, that's the girl who's... Uh, and then, then, then at Leicester started speaking to you and cheering for you more, and it's just, and now you're in our pocket. And I think it's that, like, people need to realise that, yeah, it's not it's not the Premier League, it's not this, but it's, it's a totally different thing. It's a totally different feeling watching... Me watching, and I'm sure you think the same, watching the men's team at Old Trafford, you know, to even even watching the under-23s at wherever, it's different than watching, like, the women's team. And, you know, I think unless people try it, you can't really say you don't like it. You get what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Like, women's football's got to be watched. Women's football's got to be watched to be understood, I think. Um, and that's something that... Like I say, the coverage on the TV and stuff is making it more accessible, so people are getting more interested in watching it. Um, but yeah, people always have their opinions, don't they? So yeah, I'm just going to add to that now. I'm going to say I prefer it more than men's football now. I really do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, no, honestly, no, I like thing. you. I like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been around. I actually saw you at Millwall um, back in the day. I, I started my football journey sort of pre-United. Um, I just okay. I just enjoy it more, you know. I, like some of the men's games now, you just I, I get wound up when I go. You know, I'm I'm one of these that I, I take losing badly and I don't enjoy it. Whereas with the women's game, even after a loss, I'm not as like aggy as like I might mm-hmm. be with the men's. And I think it's just it's nice because the whole the whole atmosphere, like you said, not not just the social side, but like you said, you know, talking and chatting with players after the game, you know, you're never gonna get like Ronaldo it's coming so over to the side yeah. of the pitch for, like 20 minutes. Do you know what I mean? I think things like yeah. that and it's affordable as well. And I think it massively helps in terms of growth and getting fans in. You know, we we can, I mean, our season tickets now at United are cheaper than one game for the men's, for example. Mm, I think yeah. it's things like that that make a difference. If you're a family of, say, four or five plus, you know, you can get to sort of a women's game for the day for, you know, less than 50 quid. And if that was the men's, you're talking two, three, four hundred quid. So I think, yeah, yeah. just one of the many reasons no, why I, yeah. <laughs> I love it more than the men's now. And like you said, Nat, obviously, I think it was the first weekend of the season. We played Friday, went to Villa Saturday and was it FC United Sunday? Managed to get like, oh, yeah. <laughs> as many as <laughs> 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 Busy it's weekend. Yeah. That's it. um, let's have a look what I forgot next. Um, Vicky is asking, support given to you sort of as a youngster? Um, yeah, went on the move. Does that mean like when I moved from Millwall to Bristol? Was that? Yeah, I, I think, think so. Just, yeah, just anywhere. Just yes, in obviously. General. Yeah, just any any um, help given by new clubs, in t- probably in terms of, like settling in and things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I left Millwall when I was eighteen, so it was quite um, it was quite quite a new thing for me. I never left home, um, but yeah, when I went to Bristol, it was really it was really welcoming. Um, there were sort of girls that were sort of. Been in and around the setup for a long time, um, with a lot of experience. Sort of knew the area, which helped me because it was like, oh, where can I go to just chill, or where can I go to do this or to do that? And I was shown sort of around around the um, the city itself. So I think that helped a lot um, with me moving there because it sort of helped me to take the whole experience in. It wasn't just I'm there for football and I'm there isolated myself. Um, so yeah. That definitely helped for me, I think, um, coming into a team with players that are familiar with the area. Um, and then, like you say, coaches as well. Um, I was always always able to go to, to Tanya at Bristol and, and ask for help or wherever it was that I, w- that I was at. Um, I had a lot of good friendships with the girls there. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was good and it was, it was sort of clean cut moving in. But I just, at the time, I didn't know if it was for me or not, which... Like I say, I've I've learnt from it, which is nice. But yeah, 
No, no worries. John's question, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, look. What's the first yeah, fixture you look out for when released at the start of the season? I know which one I do. Liverpool. Well, if we were <laughs> or City. <laughs> Liverpool or City. Uh, what's the first fixture you look out for? Is there anything local derby? Anything? Probably a derby, yeah, because they're the most sort mm. of fiery and sort of you're up for it on that day, aren't you? I think we, yeah, we've got yeah. Palace this weekend anyway, so that's the derby yeah. day coming up, um, which will be interesting. But yeah, um, particularly I don't, I don't really, I just take sort Do you of ever, who we got first and yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you ever think like um, obviously, like I say, a derby, Man City, Man Liverpool, you know that kind of thing? But do you ever think, oh, I've got my old club, or you know, if you're drawn against your old, does that ever give you that extra? Bomb. Yeah, Fire. that does. Yeah, I've been in a f- yeah maybe a few situations where I've I've had to play against my old team. Um, I think it gives you that extra bit of like you want to win um, mm. behind it. But yeah, um, for me, yeah, fixtures wise, I just sort of take the seasons it comes, and it's it's all about taking each game as it comes, ain't it? But yeah, definitely, I definitely look forward to the games that sort of mean a little bit more to me, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, yeah, Gareth's one there. Yeah, what um, we got? Game. How did the first game against Lewis getting postponed affect yeah, the threat for the How did the first game of the season get postponed? I don't know if he's... What was that, sorry? How, how did the first did the game f- of the season against Lewis get postponed affect the prep for having... season? Um... Yeah, it was a bit of a kick in the teeth. It was like everyone's starting their season and we're just here for the next week again. Um, but it's sort of things that are out of our control. Um, so we, we didn't let it sort of affect us as 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 such. But um, I think it's you're just itching to get out there. I think once we'd all sort of completed pre-season and we was like, oh, we're ready for this, like ready for a good season. Um, we all felt good. We all felt strong and sharp and and you're at you, you know you're read up for the first game um and then it gets called off you're a bit like oh okay but yeah um definitely for us i think that just sort of put us in a more a better mindset if i'd say if that because we were like okay cool so we've got now a week to prep for this game and and, and it's like and then that makes it our first game so it didn't sort of stagger anything in terms of preparation because we was we was always going to be prepared, no matter who we was playing against. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah, for us that that, that with everyone playing and, and us not. Uh, well, personally, I felt like it was a bit like oh, missing out here. Yeah, uh, Vicky's sort of saying that your goal against Liverpool makes you popular. So they uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what what was that feeling? Oh, oh wow! Well, <laughs> As... No, yeah, if... honestly, yeah. like. Go on. As fans, I think it's for you. That's probably the best thing, isn't it? Yeah, beating Liverpool. <laughs> I'm telling you, beating Liverpool and beating City, those are the best things. And I think as fans, that's what we love, isn't it? And I mean, what's your thoughts, Ella, on rivalry? We're seeing it a bit more, we're seeing it promoted a bit more, but then we are seeing maybe some people who don't want to see it. What do you think? You know, like you say, it's a local derby palace. Palace have got good fans. Um, yeah, no, I do know, like to shout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I, I enjoy games like that, you know. Um, I think it's important to have that in football, you know. Your whole Manchester's red, your Manchester's blue and stuff like that. I think that wow. that really, like, it, it's great to have. Um, and it also sort of gives the players that extra bit of a... to sort of make that their their town yeah. now do you know what I mean um yeah. so yeah no it, it is good for players and it's good for the game as well to have those sort of rivalries and want, wanting to be beating certain opponents that are local yeah and obviously you've got a few London teams you've got uh London City Lionesses like you say Palace that are coming Lose, um you know they're at Watford yeah so does it you know because I think in London I always look at everyone's arrival in London you know yeah yeah <laughs> No, yeah, definitely. Um, you want you wanting to win and, and go into your games. What's that? Manchester is always red a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I just seen it pop up. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I got lost what I was saying then. Um, yeah, you, listen, you wanting to go into every game to win it. Um, but yeah, that def- definitely that being a local team and stuff, it definitely 
you know, the history that it holds, having having them derbies and having them rivals, it does definitely add that extra bit of excitement to the game, um, which, like I say, is definitely needed. Mm. Shahan's here. Oh, God. Shahan's here. Big Bristol fan. He runs the Bristol City Women's Podcast. So he's saying you have Ether Cummins and Megan Wim and Kira Sheets. I've not got that name, sorry. Skills, at yeah, that's right. Skills who are at Bristol after you. So is Charlton just Bristol in disguise? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Like, football, I think football is very. Um, yeah. It's a very small world. I think. Yeah, yeah. It is. Um. So you're like you. You sort of you are getting. I think. Yeah, yeah. It is. Um, so you go like, to teams and you're playing with with players that you know or, or and stuff like that, and you've come across before in the past. Um, which is nice as well because they're familiar faces and and yeah. It just, it just helps, I think, when you're going into that environment to have people that you sort of know and played with. I played with Meg at um, Millwall as well when I was when I was young, so I've known Meg for a few years. But yeah, you played with a yeah, few United nice players, nice haven't nice you? Yeah. What's that? You sorry, with a f- you played with a few United players. I mean, X now, you know, Ebony, LJ, I know they're X, mm-hmm. but you know, Rambo. I remember you yeah. playing with her. Palmer. I was in, um, no, I've, I've been in around sort of Russo as well, and and those sort oh, of girls. Okay. When I first went to a uh, England camp, it was, I think I was like twelve at the time, but I played with the age group above. Um, so I was in and around them girls as well. Um, Tooney, you know, yeah, I, I've I've yeah, been in and too. around. So yeah, it definitely yeah. does help. I think like, if you go into clubs and and you've already you've already played with with those sort of players, it helps because it's a familiar face and and you've played with them before. So yeah, definitely. Stuart saying, what do you think about Man United now? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Oh, no, it's not <laughs> right. be a rival. Man United now. Um, I think it's a great club. Um, yeah. I think like the support obviously you lot are giving um to the women's side, I think it's it's massive. Um and it's what every club should sort of inspire to have. You know, you've got your own podcast and stuff, you you're really behind the women. So I think um like I'll say it again, you lot of credit to to women's football because you you support it so much. So yeah, I think United United is a massive club and it deserves a massive following. So um yeah, yeah, yeah. And John saying here before I wrap it up, would you recommend we ask anyone to come on the show next who would have a few stories to tell? Oh, that's a good uh, question. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Eb, have you had Eb on here? No, no, that's that's a pipeline. I think that'll dream. be in, that'll be interesting because obviously she's yeah. gone out to to the states and stuff. Um, mm. So she could probably share her experiences, sort of moving away from England. Yeah. Um, I think it's a massive tell her to thing come to on. Do. Tell her to come on, Ella. Yeah, I'll give her a little. I'll give her a little buzz over. <laughs> give her a little push, <laughs> push. Yeah, love Eb. Oh, we'll love Eb. Yeah, definitely Ebby Salmon, definitely. I'd love Eb. How I mean. Do you still speak to a lot of them girls that are in that nineteen team then? Yeah, yeah, good friends of them all. Yeah, you know, you you grow. I've sort of grown up with them girls um, from the under fifteens to the to the nineteens. So, um, yeah, and then sort of playing against some of them now as well in the championship, which is nice uh, oh. to see. Oh, has he gone off? Yeah, I think he's in there. Don't worry about him. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Thought <laughs> you were just leaving me like that. No, no, no. Um, no, 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 no but sorry. yeah. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice, to obviously. Yeah, to keep those friendships in football, I think it's sort yeah. of it, it makes it it makes it nice when you're playing against certain teams and you're um you're seeing your friends. So yeah, brilliant. I think we're gonna wrap it up, Ella. Thank you I've so been much. Chewing, I just... chewing your ears off for an hour. No, no, no. <laughs> and listen, <laughs> if you if you've got any little story, just the one last thing. John's talking about anyone with good stories. Have you got a good story? Maybe we didn't know that you want to tell, story. or you could tell. In terms of football? In terms of anything. <laughs> <laughs> but then you've probably gone to tell it if it's in terms of anything. My child, child's pregnant. That's a good fact thing there. Right. So there you go. These preggers. But um, no, a good story, I think, just for me, is that the comeback that I've been on at the minute. Mm. You know, I've had a few rocky seasons. So for me to sort of find my feet again and be playing well um, and enjoying football again, I think that's just a big big thing for me. So, yeah. Yeah. Vicky saying she enjoyed it, keep it clean, you know. That's always us, Vicky. Yeah. Um but you know, thank you so much. I know you you saying thanks for us, but no, we really appreciate it having you on and definitely we'll have you on again if you if you want to, if you're happy, we're happy, you know, at any point if you just want to come and chat and pop on and have a chat. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate thank it. Honestly, so thank much. you for having me. 
That's all right. It's Thank been a so pleasure. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll wrap it there. But thanks once again. And um, Thursday is the next show, is it, Nat? Yeah, Thursday. Me and John, Susie Raxon, we're talking. Mark Skinner, we're talking out of player contracts. So you know, definitely tune into that one. It'll be a good one. And then obviously Friday fans forum and Saturday you and Benny, and then Sunday match day. So yeah, love it. Busy week. No um, busy week. Take care. Yeah, cheers. Good and luck. Thank you to everyone that See tuned you all in later. as well. Bye. 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 Bye.